Good evening and welcome to Pultee's World on this glorious June day. Well, it's not so glorious because it's freezing. However, warm weather is on its way. What's absolutely fabulous about June is how long the days are. Siri, what time is it? It's 1912. What time is sunset? Today, sunset will be at 2143. And what about sunrise? Sunrise was at 443 today. 443 sunrise. <laughs> Incredible. You've got to love these long, long June days. Obviously, I'm talking about the Northern Hemisphere and Britain is actually quite far north. Uh, where I live is on the same latitude as Edmonton, Canada. And in this video, we're going to do a complete tour of the garden. And just look behind me. Oh, the sun's just glinting through the trees over there. Just look behind me. This is a Deutzia, or as many people would pronounce it, Deutzia. Either way, just look at that. And the bees like it. It's a great plant to have out at the moment because the summer shrubs aren't flowering yet. And just above it, we've got a maple. This is a Drummondii. It's starting to grow quite well now. And you can see just above there are some strong branches growing that are fully green. So I'm going to have to chop those out. I was going to do it last year in the winter, but then I didn't know which of the branches had reverted. Oh, and there's a number back here. Look at this. So that one's got to come off. So there's two there to come off. And look how this has grown. It flowers really nicely in spring, this maple. And in fact, just about all trees and all plants flower. Often we don't see the flowers, they're very small. This one is quite large. We'll make our way up the garden, just past the Cherokee. It's just starting to get those little tinges of red round the leaves. It's really putting on some growth. Just look at that. I was a little unsure to begin with about putting a large tree shrub in the middle of the lawn, but I think it works. It really breaks up the garden and makes it look less like a football pitch. We've seen a lot of hostas in this last couple of videos. And I never actually realized how many hostas I've got. But they're doing quite well. And this bed doesn't suffer from the slugs quite so much. And here we've got the wedding cake plant, tree. And in fact, I'm gonna to have to cut it back a little bit. It's a shame because look at these tears. They're growing right over the um, oak leaf hydrangea. And it's starting now to fill out just like an oak leaf hydrangea should. Quite exciting really, because now my three oak leaf hydrangeas are starting to look really good. The hydrangeas 
are starting to overpower the azaleas at the side. But just look how healthy these look. I'm really pleased about these paniculatas. It's going to look absolutely gorgeous. There's that absolutely gorgeous again in July and August and right through the summer. Let's just have a look at this border from the other side. Yes, I'm just going to have to cut back some of this controversa because it's coming right over these paniculatas. Some of my hostas are getting a little bit too big and are growing over the azaleas. So I think this hosta is going to have to go somewhere else. But I do like the others in amongst the azaleas and the hydrangeas and under the controversa. Yeah, this is a pink diamond. And we'll have a closer look at these paniculatas in another month when the flowers are out. And here we are again at the white hydrangea. I did say it was going to have to go and it will. Obviously I'll give it away or someone will have it, but it's looking so nice at the moment and we've had so much rain, it's looking great. So it's going to have to stay while it's looking good. There's the first of the penstemons just coming out. I didn't cut these back as much as I should have done, but I will cut them back a lot next spring. Let's see what's happening in the upper terrace. These campanulas they self-seed and just put themselves where they want and they're starting to be a feature in this little border here and I like them because they just do their thing. Sometimes I'll thin them out a little bit but I really do like plants self-seeding and looking good where they want to be. Rose Campion, these have self-seeded, quite nice. I've got a white one as well as the, the red. Hookahs look nice at this time of the year. Gosh, the colour of that is gorgeous. The laurel that I cloud pruned in one of the other videos a couple of years ago is really putting on some growth and so I need to do that again. Keep it in, under control. The Liastris looking great there. I think I split that, but I'm going to split it again. I want to split a lot of these perennials next spring. I want to fill this border with this Liastris the, um, and the Veronicas. Some of the Hookahs have been flowering nicely, just going over now. Right at the pole position here, just where the path goes by, is the Philadelphus. I've got four Philadelphus in the garden. Three in the front garden and one in the back garden. I think this is called Belle Etoile. I'm going to tidy this one up. Uh, after it's finished flowering, as I tend to leave shrubs a lot and I think it's time that this one was tidied up. <laughs> look, look at this branch coming off here. Oh, smells really nice. Got a dahlia here. I planted it here uh, away from the other dahlias 
that are all in the back garden. Oh, it's flowering. And this one does really well. And I have high hopes for this Cotinus smoke bush. Oh, and we've got one of those weeds here. Look at that. These weeds. There we are. They, they do pull out easily, which is good. Back to the Cotinus. I've got two, one in the back garden and one in the front, and this is the Chartreuse one. It hasn't been doing well this last three years. I think it's three or four years old now, but this is the best it's looked, and indeed it flowered. It does like ericaceous food and rainwater. The rigorons have started. Always makes me think of the seaside, these type of plants. Now they were all down here, but for some reason they've died off here. And so I've dug them out and I'll probably uh, dig some of these out and fill this gap again with them. Sedums are getting ready for autumn. Oh, and behind here, let's just go and have a look at that clematis, the avalanche. Doesn't look much now, does it? I cut it right back. And now what can we see here? There we are, starting to grow here here. It's being a little slow because as I've cut it back I want it to obviously grow forward again so we get all those lovely flowers. These are the ones that are going to grow along here. There's another little shoot there so I want it to come right the way along here to flower next spring. So yes it looks uh, a little thin at this time of the year, but it will come good. It'll suddenly start when the temperature starts up. Let's have a look at the side bed here where all the ericaceous plants are. And we're just going to pass two Brugmansias. These are two of the three that I kept in the garage over winter. This one's a sort of pinky one, and, and this is the Charles Grimaldi. Leaves don't look great. Brugmansia leaves often don't until they've got a lot of heat and food and really get going. But they're quite far behind this year. Now let's see what's happening with this bed here. We've got some flowers already on this rather pretty lace cap hydrangea. That was a cutting I took, as was this one. Now this rhododendron here, I've actually spent some time taking the dead spent flowers off. If you have a very large rhododendron, it's kind of not worth it and difficult to do and take so long. But this one I thought I would clean up and this is how you do it. You've just got to make sure that you don't damage the new growth. Here's another lace cap. I actually like the lace caps possibly better than the mop heads because the insects, the butterflies and the bees like the lace caps because you've got sterile flowers, but you've also got non-sterile flowers. In one of the other videos, I talked about this white azalea here, the, the one I call a waterfall, and that the choicea was growing right over it. And now I've got round to cutting the choicea right back. And as you can see here, it's looking a little bit bald. 
But in a few months time, and in fact you can see already, look at these little leaves growing. In a few months time, there'll be all lovely little leaves along there and it'll look nice. Because these choices, they do grow forward quite rapidly and without you noticing. Look how much this has grown over the grass. I only noticed the other day when I was mowing the lawn and it's grown right over the lawn. So really I could do with cutting that back a little bit. Although I do like the soft look of shrubs growing over walls and lawns. Let's go down to the front of the roadbed and see how those shrubs are doing. Of course, coming down to the roadbed means there'll be a little bit of road noise. We'll pass the hellebores. The rhododendrons. The magnolia. This is the stellata. Now, it's a little bit of a wild area here. So let's see how it's doing. So first of all, we've got the eucalyptus gunnii. Remember a number of years ago, I just cut it off here because it was getting too tall and now it's getting too tall again. I'm a little bit nervous about eucalyptus, but I do like it and it fills that gap there. So from the top of the garden, the house across the road is reasonably hidden. And I do like the houses nearby to be hidden. Geranium rosan. Oh, there is a flower down there. Here we are. You are making it there at the moment. That'll come into full flower shortly. A couple of hydrangea cuttings there and there. That one's a paniculata. Oh, here we are. I actually planted a clematis cutting a montana and what i like about these montanas is you put them at the base of a tree or a shrub i've got it down there somewhere i don't know where it is but it's it's down there somewhere and it just turns up anywhere so that's looking really strong but it looks a little lost, so I might just have to put it where I want it. I want it to go up that tree. That's a, a dead laburnum tree. I want it to go up there. So I'm glad I just noticed that. So I'll wrap it round that tree. I've got another Montana cutting there. It's a little bit under the shrub, so it doesn't get as much rain there as it would like, but I want it to kind of grow through the shrub here. I've got mostly evergreen shrubs along the roadbed for obvious reasons. And I noticed this the other day. This is another Clematis uh, Montana type pruning group three. And I didn't notice rather than it growing up the shrubs here, it's actually fallen forward. So that's a bit of a nuisance that I didn't notice it earlier. Well, and here are these Brunnera. Well, where I split it there because I want Brunnera up right the way along here. And I've got some more geraniums here. I thought I'd put a large hosta down here and indeed it doesn't have slug damage does it? Well not much anyway. Just a little bit there. It's tidying up here a little bit. Different kind of Brunnera, be Jack Frost or Sea Breeze. Here, in fact, this is uh, this one was split. And here's my second oak leaf hydrangea. Oh, I can see here that one of the clematises. Can you see it just winding its way up through this hawthorn? So that's going to flower and turn up 
possibly this side of the hawthorn or the other side. Oh, there's some flowers from the rambling rose. I cut it back quite a lot last year and uh, I cut it back late and so it hasn't flowered much this year. Oh, a nice little hosta there. Just making our way up the path, we come to the wall here and this is a candy tuft. This candy tuft was massive right over the wall here looking great. I actually cut it right back, dug it out and replanted it and that's because it got in, invaded with vinca. There are two types of vinca and both of them are pretty bad and it was right amongst here and it took some getting out. So now it's going to have to grow forward again and it'll do that over the next couple of years. Here's another view of that liastris. Doesn't it look healthy? Look at that. Oh, and I grow that for the bees. Lovely walking past the Philadelphus. Always have a little sniff. Lovely. Now, here we have a border that I haven't shown you much sort of a little forgotten border even though it's by the side of the house and what I've done is I've grown these shrubs here mostly evergreen but not all just to have a buffer with the house next door so let's see what we've actually got here so first of all the hedge between the houses is privet do with uh, trimming it really. Now from next door he says quietly getting a lot of ivy so I don't really want the ivy coming through. I've actually forgotten the name of this so I'll have to look it up and put it on the screen. It has these lovely white bracts. There's the Escalonia here that I told you wasn't doing so well. I'm going to plant a Montana here and let's see if I can get a Montana coming up this Escalonia. We've got a Berberis here. They're not so invasive as in other countries. This is a Darwinii, very pretty with yellow flowers. I've got another Hydrangea paniculata there to fill that gap, although the Berberis is moving over. I'll cut that back and another Philadelphus and it's in front of a choicea. Now choicea is a brilliant plant to block a view, to hide things and it's nice and bright as well. I planted another candy tuft here because I've got a little bit of a wall there we are, it's a sandstone wall I had put in when I had the extension done. Cost a fortune, cost a thousand pounds. But it looks really nice, better than the flagstones that the previous owner had put up there. So we'll just move past the, I call this the D bed. I had them leave this area here when they were doing the block paving. I've got azaleas in there and a couple of little rhododendrons and also a tamarisk. It's really nice. Unfortunately it only flowers for a couple of weeks but it looks really nice when it does. So the other things I put in here was a viburnum because it grows big and tall and thick and non see-through. Then a pretty Wygela. This is a Wygela. Again, I don't know the variety, but I should be able to find it and put it up on the screen. And it's really growing now. It's taken a few years, but it's starting to do the Wygela thing of these lovely arching stems. And just look at these gorgeous leaves. 
This has little pink flowers. I've got another geranium Suzanne in front and I bought this plant. I've forgotten the name of it, but it hasn't worked. And in fact, is it the slugs that have got it or something? But it, oh, it's actually layered itself. So there's another one there. Ooh, what's this? Ooh, uh oh, I think I know what that is. I wonder if it's what I think, think it is, this. This here. I think that that's a Rose of Sharon. Now, Rose of Sharon means different things to different people in different countries, but we call it a Rose of Sharon, this. And this bed was full of Rose of Sharon. And I dug it out, it took two winters to dig it out, and I think that's it. Oh, and we've got a little ivy just growing here, so I'll be pulling that out. And this euonymus, it was only small, really small in the corner here, and it suddenly took off. And as I've mentioned before in videos, once it took off and it touched the hedge, it just grew up the hedge. And so look at that as a thick barrier evergreen and it's pretty because some of the privet is actually dying so I needed something to take over from this privet and in fact I'll show you what I've done let's just go in this border and see what I've done here let's hope it works because that euonymus has done so well I actually took some cuttings from it. And here are the cuttings. So I've, I've placed the cuttings right at the base of this hedge. Because I'm hoping that they, uh, I'm hoping that these cuttings will do what its parent has done. And well, there's a gold one. And that is to grow up and through this privet. Because just look at this. Some of the privet's dying. Now I don't want to cut the hedge down because we have a problem then. So if this euonymus can grow up, oh, we've got all sorts here. Got a holly. Got a holly there. This has come through from next door, which I'm happy about. It's nice and evergreen. So We've got a nice thick barrier, thick hedge. Let's hope that these euonymus do what I've... do what I'm hoping. There we are. Might take a while, but I've got them going. Now one of them was eaten by slugs, this one here. So uh, I want to try and protect that so it can get going. I hope you've enjoyed this walk around my English garden in mid-June and I'll see you next time in Paul T's world. Bye.